this video, we'll take a look at the Zeppon Micro 2 motorized slider. I have quite a history with sliders. I used to use them a lot in my prior life, and then I got away from them. Hand moving them, then they came out with the electronic ones, and they were okay. The Zeppon Micro 2 motorized slider, I was kind of impressed. They reached out to me and said, hey, we'll give you this slider if you review it. I was like, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not really into sliders. I don't know if my audience would like it. I looked at it, it's a micro slider. It's reasonably priced for a motorized slider. And finally I said, sure, I'll take a look at it. Well, then a lot of stuff happened. I filmed some <laughs> segments. I filmed a little bit of outside stuff. I fell off a ladder. I busted up my foot. So in this video, you're gonna get as much footage as I can give you and then I shot and later on I will shoot more footage for you so you can see what this things do but I think this video should be enough for you to decide whether or not this is something a you can afford and b that is right for your type of particular situation let's take a look at this thing first off this thing measures just about 16 and a quarter inches long this is the slider itself the first thing you should notice on the side are these two locking buttons here when you get the slider, you obviously want to unlock those. They lock the carriage down. It's pretty tight when I lock that down. This doesn't move at all. Not even sure why there's locking buttons. I'm sure there is. Probably if you're replacing the belt or something like that. Although the belt's pretty tight. We'll have to see how long that belt lasts. Now, interestingly enough, there was some thought put into here. These all come down at an angle, both on the top and bottom. They were actually designed this way, so as the slider moves back and forth, it removes any dust or dirt particles in here that would keep the thing from sliding, which is a really good design in my opinion. This little gizmo here, it allows you to tension the belt. It's a belt, as all belts after use, they get a little loose and you can just tension the belt a little bit and keep it tight. It kind of makes me wonder why on a capsulated unit like this, why they wouldn't build in mechanical gears in this thing so it moves back and forth until I realized that originally they sold this slider as a single standalone unit where you could just move it back and forth by hand and what they did was they added the motor to it and the belt and pulley system so you could actually go through if you have the slider already order the motor system the belt and everything else and attach it to this it's actually kind of a brilliant way to allow the users of their original micro not the micro 2 to upgrade their system to an automated unit now on the bottom again you have another belt tensioner it's the same thing it just tensions belt bottom and top this is a three inch thread down here i took out the adapter they have an adapter here that also mounts quarter 20 when i'm mounting it to a tripod i use that they also include what we'll go into later is this little stand that you can use without the tripod and you'll notice right here it has a little seat groove on it which fits into this nicely like this so you're always sure when you're putting this thing on that seats correctly and we'll go into this guy in a little bit over here hidden under this little rubber stopper just like cameras do you have a USB-C adapter that's used to power the unit if you don't want to use battery I believe at least uh, uses a 12 volt 2 amp connector we'll talk about this minute 2.5 millimeter shutter port now they brought came with a quite an array there's one two three four different type of connectors for different types of cameras. What you can do is from the app is connect this up to your camera if it's applicable. It could be Canon, Sony, Panasonic, etc. And you can control uh, things like uh, focus, uh, shutter speed, and all sorts of things while you're running the app um, from this trigger right here. Now you can use the smaller profile Sony batteries. The smaller profile is about this big. And that's kind of handy if you don't want the thing sticking out. Uh, it sticks out to about here. I love using these large 970 batteries from Sony. The reason why I love these things is because I stick this thing in here, lock it down, and <laughs> this thing runs. I believe I got 14 or 16 hours on this. I lost track. Single press powers the units on. That shows that it's on. And these two little dots down here show your speed. A press gives you max speed. That's slow speed medium speed, high speed. 
So you can set that. From the app, you can do a whole bunch of things with this. They have also added a firmware upgrade in this because users were complaining before um, about how they wanted to set certain things like the in point and the out point you can set from here. But the looping going back and forth on this unit, they wanted to also be able to set it from here and they added a firmware upgrade, which I'll also show you in a moment. I just wanted to show you a few button press things that are going on here. Holding down the button for three seconds turns it off. Holding down the button for three seconds turns it on. You'll see it turn green. It comes on by default with two greens. That's the middle sliding amount. A single button press goes to the uh, fastest. One is the slowest. Two is the medium. Three is the fastest. Now these buttons up here, those are the ones that set your waypoints. So if I set a waypoint over here, for instance, and I double click the power button, you'll hear a beep, it sets one waypoint. Now if I double click over here, or excuse me, move over here, let's set a waypoint there, double click, you hear a beep beep. Now what it's going to do is when I go to uh, want this thing to slide automatically from this unit, I'm not using the app, you double click and it moves from one waypoint to another. Now in the version um, of the new firmware that updated, they added it so if you hold down this button here and click the power button, I just put it on slow mode, now see as it's moving, I can still change the speed. But the thing is, is while I click this, held down this back button and click that power button, it puts it in this new firmware into this looping mode. And that's another thing. In this looping mode, if you want to, you can change it to the slow mode. It's totally okay. You can change it into the medium mode. And you can change it into the fast mode. If you want to turn it off, you can even hold the button down and it'll shut down and you're done. Now we have this unit. This is basically a stand which is used. In, if you're not mounting this to a tripod, you may just want to take this out and mount your camera on it and just sit it down on the ground. Well, this moves back and forth so it needs something to rest on and that's what this is for. Uh, for this particular application, I'll use the included 3 8 to quarter 20 adapter. Match the groove over here like that and take the quarter 20 screw and make sure that's locked down. Now there are some cool things about this I really like. I like the fact that these fold out any direction like this and like this. Sometimes you may want to have these like this. Uh, if there's a lot of weight on this thing, sometimes you may want them out here. It just depends on the application and what you're setting it down on. It also has these nifty little feet on here. And these feet will screw in and out. So they're somewhat like a level in and out like that. I would have preferred instead of the feet like this, I really would have preferred something like I've seen on other units where um, they have more of a foot base on this a longer throw or whatever if I'm really on weird terrain or something like that. It's not a big deal. You can get around it. It's just something else I would like to see on this. The other thing I would like to see on this is I would like to see instead of these free floating, they're, they're pretty tight and you can tighten them down, but I would like to see some sort of mechanism where I unloose or gear mechanism or something where they would click, 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 click. Because um, what I happened, as you'll see later, when I set this on the ground and I'm moving it around and I'm trying to position it, is these move around quite a bit. These go out like this and like this. These move around quite a bit when I'm trying to position it. So I'd like to see some way to like lock it down, even a little thumb screw or something that doesn't um, interfere with this over here and over here. But this does the job nicely. I used it once I used it and got used to it. It works. I would just like some sort of clicking or lockdown or something on this and also the feet, something a bit larger and some sort of lockdown on this. So when I'm unscrewing these, trying to level it, 
you know, you can, you can get to a screw part where it comes out really far, it's a long screw, but I'd really like it to just stay in place and maybe some more feet. And that's how that works. And you slip, simply throw her down like that and she sits there. Now you'll see all sorts of stuff later when I um, are showing you some of these shots. For instance, if you have these like this and you have a really heavy camera on this thing, it will tilt up. And I'll show you, I used a really heavy camera to test this, it will tilt up. You just need to make sure if it's on the ground to move your feet in so it is balanced. I give you all sorts of tips and tricks about doing this and, and how that works and, and what to watch out for. As with any slider, you need to test it out. Again, you know, it just moves like this. Now, I'm sitting here with the microphone maybe 10 inches away. You're probably wondering about noise. Here's the slowest speed. Let's listen. That's not only really slow, but I can't hear anything. Let's go to the second speed. I can hear that, but remember, some of that sound is going into the table and reverberating through the metal table, etc. When I was outside on concrete or on stone or near the waterfall, I heard none of that. Here's a speed on the uh, third setting. Again, you're hearing a little bit of noise off of this uh, motor mechanism. For a slider like this, it's really quiet in comparison to anything else I have ever used. Now you may be wondering if you're sitting here and you have a slider and it's more or less 16 inches. The rail itself is actually 12 inches. So you have a 12 inch rail here. How good is that gonna be getting 12 inches? Well, that's part of the deal with this is the motor moves uh, not the slide. Let's check this out. So here's our 12 inch of rail and you'll notice the entire rail and the camera's moving. So now we're sitting down here. I'm using the center of the camera, not the rail itself. And let's move it all the way back to the other side. That's 16 inches. So you're basically getting out of this 12 inch slide, you're getting a 16 inch slide all the way across. Now remember, this is called <laughs> the micro two. This isn't supposed to be some long five foot or three foot slider, but this does the job if you set it up right. Now the other thing this comes with is this USB-C, USB cable. Um, they tell me uh, I tried to buy various power adapters like this one. And uh, let's check the battery specs on this. According to the specs here, the operational capacity is 8.4 volts, 1.5 amps. The input voltage is 9 volts to 12 volts. Um, here's your compatible batteries, which is a 550, 750, and as I said, a 950. Now again, this is the USB-C. It plugs right into here and has a USB uh, end here. I haven't tried it on my computer. I've tried this one, which is rated at 12 volts, 1.5 amps, or 9 volt, 2 amps, um, plugging into both the quick charge and the regular. I couldn't get this unit by itself to work. Now, that being said, I did not update the firmware first, which I should have done before doing any of this. Now, for me, I simply mounted the adapter here. There's a quarter. 20 and a 3 8 20. I would have liked to seen something like iFootage does where they have spring loaded in here so you don't have to be taking these on and off. Right now I have a 3 8 on here and I put it on. I'm not going to get it off by hand. Those spring loaded right here, the spring loaded uh, mechanisms that iFootage has. I would really love to see this in here because that's a lot of headaches. And if you don't have one of these handy, that's a pain. I'm just going to simply mount one of my favorite mounts in the world which is my iFootage quick release system. You simply lock it on there, get it geared, and then you your, the quick release system mounts on there. Let's go mount up this thing. I'm going to use my Canon 
XF400 on here, which is quite heavy um, with the top handle and everything else. And then it's going to be a iFootage Komodo K5. Uh, this thing has some weight. And I'm trying to stress this. You'd normally throw a DSLR up on here with a little tripod head or something like that. I am purposely trying to overstress this to its max. Now, another thing I should mention about this quick release plate, I didn't use it at the time because I actually didn't know. I thought this was for something special. They actually have this little mechanism here. This has a grooved area here, and then they have what they call a quick release plate. Um, it's not really a quick release plate, but what happens is that allows me to not have to remove this and mount my this on the bottom of my tripod. I simple, simply take these grooves and match them up, slide them in the grooves, and then yank that down tight. And that's not going anywhere. The nice thing about that is then I can fold these legs in as necessary as needed. And when I drop it in onto my tripod, I have a flat surface. When I take it off my tripod, I can fold out the legs and put it on the ground. And that way I'm not having to take this thing and unmount this thing every time and put it on my tripod and mount it back up. That's really ingenious. And as most of the things here, this is a quarter 20, it's removable. And beneath that is a 3 8 for a tripod. Now, a couple of things I'd really like to see on this unit is this motor. I kind of like that you can undo these and replace this head. I would love to see an OLED display with readouts and being able to do all that. But remember, the minute you add an OLED display and all these fancy dancy things, that's going to shoot the cost of this thing way up. So if you don't want to pay, you know, $900 or $1,000 for something like this with a fancy OLED spray, uh, display and all the controls and the software and the menus and everything else, you know, this is not bad. I like its simplicity and I like that I'm able to control it from the app. As you'll see when I go outside and do some shooting, I'm sitting there with my iPhone showing you what I'm shooting. I'm shooting with the XF400, the actual shot that you can see, and then I'm using my iPad to use the Zepon app to control the Zeppon. So it's not like you have a phone and that's all you can do. You can use it on your iPad or your Android or your device or your app or whatever you want, as you'll see in a minute. Here I am setting up the slider and just adjusting the camera to make sure everything is just copacetic. Now, just as a caution, you need to make sure when you're next to water, this isn't waterproof, make sure to test it. Slide it back, slide it forth to make sure the weight or whatever you're using this for, especially when you're using these legs down below, that the thing doesn't tip over or your gear doesn't drop or the thing doesn't fall into the water. I'm just testing the back and forth here with my finger on it. Notice how I lift my finger on, give it a little tilt. Looks okay to me. Now using the app, what I'm doing is I'm setting the first and second waypoints that I'm going to use, sliding it to the left and the right. Also making darn sure that uh, it is indeed sitting there and doing okay. There's my next point that I'm setting. Now I'm going to engage this thing and just play back the two waypoints and I'm going to loop it. Now it's using whatever speed I've currently set in the app. And look at that. It's going to come over here to this waypoint. It's going to hit the waypoint. Nice stop, no jiggle. Nothing weird going on. Now this is going to slide back to the other waypoint. There you go. There's the other waypoint it's set. Uh, the nice thing about this is I could add things. I could remove things. Um, I could let this thing run for an hour if I wanted to, especially since I'm using this camcorder, I could let this thing run for an hour and just uh, speed it up, slow it down, do whatever I want to do with it. 
Now here's another shot I decided I'd like to try. I have the camera and the Zeppon sitting under there with a the little uh, bushes in front of the thing. Just making sure the thing's all sturdy and it's going to stay up and everything else. Now I'm testing it out and just setting the two waypoints that I want, making sure that I have the speed that I want. So now I have the camera running. I'm doing this really slow reveal from the little bush leaves hanging down over to the waterfall. Pretty tight close in shot because I not only want to see how this thing works, but also whether it's jiggling around. I don't see anything like that at all. It looks really nice. I really like this. Just playing with the zoom here. Now it's, it's going to do the same shot. It doesn't matter whether I zoom in or zoom out. I can play with the zoom back and forth while I'm filming and I can just take the best shot I want. I don't have my hands on this while it's sliding, which is great. There's going to be no movement in the shot whatsoever. And I think this thing just looks great. Now if you look here, I've set basically two waypoints because I just wanted to demonstrate something to you when you're using this bottom uh, crab thing. But you're not going to, depending on the services, you're not going to get a lot at angle. Maybe that's 20 degrees, maybe 25 degrees or something, which is not bad. You'll notice at the end, it's going to get very close to hitting this uh, fireplace top. There is a solution to that. Um, and let me show you that. It's using a tripod. Now I've removed the bottom, uh, what I call uh, a little crab. And basically, I love these quick release plates, by the way, for my footage. Basically, I'm pulling the camera off, setting it down, make sure I don't damage it. And I'm going to take this bottom screw out for the quarter 20 that I was using. Set that aside. Because that tripod over there has a 3 8 I should have just left it in that iFootage uh, tripod. It takes both. It has that little spring thing I was mentioning before. Uh, make sure this bites. Flip it on a tripod, make sure it's tight, and then I'm good. Now I'm just going to make sure this thing's going. Turn it back on. It's moving, okay. Test works okay. Let me grab the camera, mount it on. <laughs> Again, I love these iFootage quick release plates. They just snap in and you're done. Just adjusting the head, making sure it's horizontal-ish, tightening it down. It's a ball head. And now I just want to make sure that this thing is going to be stable and sturdy. Just move it over to the left. And then move it over to the right. Just to make sure everything's cool. There's no reason why you can't take a second or two to make sure your gear is secure and is going to work before you set up some shot and have it fall down. It's pretty stable. If you look at these aluminum rails, I was putting some serious weight on there. And it's good. Here's another shot I decided to try. It's just using your tripod instead of trying to force this thing uh, at some weird angle. You have a tripod that works like this most to do. It's really easy to get a nice shot like this. I didn't have any problem with this. I didn't have any problem with the motor, the way this is mounting, getting in the shot. Well, this is just a little test shot I wanted to try. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to shoot these plants and these flowers sliding over. Um, the thing I, again, want to caution you on is this thing's pretty high and I had to pull the legs in on this tripod to get this angle that I have here. Um, this is a really nice tripod. So the thing you need to take into account when you're doing this to get this type of angle and this type of shot is you always need to test. If you're going to make a shot like this again, like over by the waterfall, making sure it didn't fall in, you always need to get up here and you need to test the left and right to make sure that it isn't going to fall over and drop your, you know, two or three thousand dollar camera down. Back and forth. Make sure this thing's going to work for you and test it before you walk away from it. Now the other thing I want to note is, although I can get my camera up here, where I'm standing is right about here. So looking up, I cannot see the buttons. I cannot control it. I can see the viewfinder. I can't see the buttons, which is why this app is so darn handy. Uh, being able to uh, take this thing and control this thing without having to have buttons or have this uh, thing engaged or trying to find out where the buttons are is just absolutely awesome. 
Here I am doing that flower pot shot again. I'm getting no deflection at all whatsoever on this uh, slider, which is great. Got to make sure this thing's locked down. Anyway, it's sliding along and it's doing a great job. I believe it's on... That's not slow-mo. I believe it's on fast mode. I don't believe there is a mode faster than that. But this looks pretty darn good the way this thing works. It's nice. It's stable. I don't have to touch it. I don't have to put my hands on it. It just makes for a great shot every time. I really like this. Now this is just a crazy test and I know I am way overstressing this thing. I got five, nearly six pounds of stuff on here, including the quick release. I'm trying to see if this thing, yeah, it's going to chunk just a little bit going up. It started to chunk and then surprisingly <laughs> enough, it's made it all the way up at this crazy degrees. It's got to be easily 50. It's got to be 60. To, nah, it's got to be a lot. That's a lot. If you run into a problem like this, there's no problem. All you do is just hit the back button and you could reverse the shot, which is a nice way to do this. The nice thing about it is when it's coming back down, there is no chunking with all this weight on it. So you could still get a really nice shot with this. I'm pretty impressed for such a small slider that I could throw in a backpack with a battery or two and get, geez, get literally 24 hours of shooting back and forth. The ability to control the motion back and forth and do all sorts of things. I'm not even going to go to on the app itself and setting, you know, in points and out points, you know, setting one, two, three, four, five waypoints. The main thing is being able to have a slider like this. One of the really cool things is you can set it on the camera like that and get really slow motion, almost not noticeable. I've seen some people actually do that. And unless you scrub through the video, you would never see that motion, but it adds just another element. Plus these reveal shots, shooting B-roll and stuff like that, uh, shooting really cool stuff. What I really do like is the repeatable shots. So you're able to sit down and set an uh, in point, an A point or a B or a C and D point. You set that A point and you can film something. You can go back and take that thing out. It will come back and do the exact same shot over and over and over. You can put elements in, you can take elements out, you can do all sorts of fancy effects and stuff like that. Being able to do that because it's a repeatable sliding shot, which is really awesome. When I get my foot back to being able to walk around and jump around and do all the things I usually do that are kind of goofy in these videos. I will make another video when I get outside and show you some really cool shots and what you can do with this thing. All right, there you go. That's the Zeppelin slider. Check it out. The links are below. I also don't forget we have free courses over at Basic Filmmaker University and they're free. So go check them out. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.